Hello and welcome to Iron Geek, and this is episode 176. I'm Ryan, I'm joined by my brother Chris and our good pal Katrin, and we got a show for you now. I've been excited about it. We've got a very special guest. Some may call him the maestro of MDF, the general grievous of Greeblies, the king of Kitbash, the sultan of Simply Juice Caps. We have Brian Thompson from the Smuggler's Room on tonight with us, and I am so excited. If you haven't seen the Smuggler's Room, you got to check it out on YouTube. Hello, Brian. How are you doing tonight? Did you like that? You like that intro? Uh, that that might be the best intro I've ever had in anything I've ever done. Like I'm done. I'm I'm out right now. I'm leaving. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna get it better than that. Thank you guys. I appreciate you having me on. It's it's just been so much fun already. We haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. <laughs> so now you can get all those on a T-shirt or something like the Sultan of Simply Juice Cash. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's it's all gonna be it'll be on our website next week for sale, there and I'll go. send Ryan and and Chris and and Carton. Wait, wait, so do you go by Chris, or you go by Katrin? <laughs> so I go by Katrin. Uh, okay. So, but my first name is Chris. Yeah, we just right. didn't want to confuse things too much. Yeah, there's two Chris's, right. but I I often if there's more than one Chris, go by my last name Street. But since gotcha. my brother is also Street, Street, yeah. I There's a lot of streets and a lot of Chris's here. Yeah, we're yeah. we're on the right street with the right Chris. We're all, we're set. We're good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but welcome to the show. We're gonna have some fun tonight. We're gonna just talk geeky stuff. Sort of get your background for those that don't know about what you do. Uh, but the Smugglers Room is a channel on YouTube, like I said, that has over thirty six thousand subscribers. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> pretty impressive. With only two like, videos, which is crazy. Wow. No. <laughs> I don't know. That first one was a, was a, like a rocket. The second one, not so much. <laughs> How long have, has the show or the channel been? You've been doing the channel? Uh, we've been, I would say, full time around two and a half years. Yeah. We, we tipped our do- toe in the water about three years ago. And then we try to put out something every week for the last two and a half years or so. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I, I, well, we've had YouTubers on before, and I'll go back like to their first video. I'll find their like first video, and it's usually very embarrassing. And I'll ask them about it, and they're like, "How did you find that?" I went back in <laughs> yours, and yours was just like, I mean, it was a great video. It was just sort of like, "This is who I am. This is what we do. <laughs> We're so excited to have you here." There was nothing to like make fun. So, well, I, I can help you nitpick it. We can we can scream it right now, and I'll break it all down for you. <laughs> <laughs> But not only do you make incredible things on the channel, but the production value of your channel is bar none. It's amazing. And it's one of the reasons that Uh kept me watching over the years. Uh, So let's, for the, for the viewers and the listeners that maybe don't know what the channel is about, can you just give us sort of a little synopsis of what the smugglers room is all about? Sure. Yeah. We, uh, our entire premise was to build something out of nothing. And that comes from my, my parents, my father and my mother. Uh, When you wanted something as a kid, you you didn't necessarily go buy it. If you said, hey, I I want an R2-D2, let's just call it that. My dad would get that glint in his eye and you would know that the wheels are turning. We're about to build something. Now, it might take five years, but we're going (laughs) to. So when uh, when we started the channel, that was one of those things that was ingrained in my mind was we need to build something out of nothing and we need to share that process with other people um that that art of creation of of thinking of something the imagination it takes and then finding materials in a way to use your hands to make that a reality is something that gets lost um and since we had the ability to do it we felt it was kind of like an obligation right we we need to do that and we need to record the process and since we've done that, there's been so many people that have shared projects with us that they've done. And that was it. We were hooked. We were done. We were said, Let, that's what we're going to do. So, yeah, that's kind of the inception of what all this is. Cool. Well, yeah, I mean, it's fun. <laughs> that's the one thing I liked about it is that basically you break it down for basically anybody can do it. If they want to put the time into it, they can make it. And it's not... 
you know, yes, you do have some, some of the stuff you do is like 3d printed and stuff, but then you use a lot right. of stuff. That's um, what we call Greeblies or what Catering calls. What'd you call it? Ah. Uh, Gimlies. Gimlies. <laughs> Gimlies. Yeah, Gimlies. Axe. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what they're called, Gimlies, because they, you make them with an axe. That's yeah. what it is. I, I, think. I have a hard time with work. <laughs> <laughs> often call things the wrong thing. So. <laughs> now, with Gre- Greeblies, was was it started with the Star Wars, or did was that a term that they sort of made up when they were making stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of folklore behind that. There's a lot of maybe it's more mythology of exactly where they came from. But the I guess it's it's a lot of people refer to the fact that George Lucas coined the phrase and he was using that word to describe something that couldn't otherwise be defined. And it was mostly in reference to the exterior of the models that they were building at ILM, Industrial Light and Magic. And John Dykstra and his team as they're building models for the movies they're kit bashing which is another term where they take model parts from all the different tanks and world war ii ships and they take all the individual pieces and give texture to the outside of a model and the word greeblies was used to describe what those are there's also the word greebles or greebly uh, in in some aspects or in some places especially in the uk they called them nurnies but it's it's basically just texture, right? It's giving something texture, uh, yeah. Which is my favorite part, obviously. <laughs> so I'm guessing you also don't get them wet or feed them after midnight. Never free to greebly after midnight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you wake up with a lot more of them the next day, and there's a few of them around here because of that exact reason. That's how you <laughs> get all the greebly. <laughs> I, I I had never really heard that term before until I watched your videos, and I'd always try to find different things just watching other makers and stuff too, uh, make things, you know, trying to find things to, to make things with, you know? And uh, yeah. so I found myself trying to collect those and trying to find like old radios, like Googling old radios and trying to find all those parts that I, I, I think of in my head and I want to put it on something, but I just can't quite find right. it yet, you know? And it's, and, uh, you know, trying to do it without doing all the printing and molding and all that, but I'm, yeah. I'm discovering I, there's just some things you just can't do. But I, it's like I find myself <laughs> just keeping weird things like this uh, concrete anchor. I was like, man, that'd be something probably. You know, <laughs> it's like you, um, you have the most so. iconic Greeblies in Star Wars lore behind you on the shelf with your <laughs> DL44 blaster. Yes. And when you when you do a search <laughs> term for Greeblies, that's one of the first things that comes up is the yeah. Han Solo blaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's missing a battery door, but it does work. And it's a terrible sound. <laughs> it, is a, it is a horrible sound. It is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> that's but from when you were a kid, was, right? It is from when I was a kid. So it's an original and uh, used to have the oh, door. That's the Kenner. To, yeah, it's the Kenner. That's the, Sorry. The Kenner. Nice. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So it's, it, it's, uh, it's pretty neat how it works. So there's a motor in it and there's a little piece of plastic that when you pull the trigger, it pulls it down on the motor as it spins. Yeah. And it's, it's neat, but it sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it does. It revs up like that. Yeah. 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 So, do you have any since we're since we mentioned Greeblies, what are your favorite <laughs> Greeblies? Uh, well, most most people would probably say it's the the Simply Juice Lid. Uh, Simply makes all different types of juices. One of these. And uh, yep, there you go, Ryan. You got it. There, there. It's, uh, if you uh, if you look at it from the top, it's got the logo on it. But if you look at it from the bottom and the sides, you've got. Uh, You've got some interesting texture to that. And yeah. my, mm. my other favorite is a toilet flange. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. I mean, most people don't rec the whole, the whole idea is to use things that aren't recognizable. Um, if you build a project that's supposed to be quote unquote in universe, mm-hmm. you want something that looks unrecognizable to the average person. And that helps sell the otherworldly factor of it. And how many people know what a toilet flange looks like, unless maybe you're a in construction or you're a plumber, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you know what that is. Yeah. Uh, and uh, on the wall behind me, there are several in that that backdrop wow. in the shop, <laughs> uh, and you'd never know they were there unless yeah. you knew that's what it was. So I spend a lot of time in the bathroom. And I <laughs> I do not recognize those. <laughs> 
You'd have to lift your toilet up from the floor and have a look, and I would yeah. recommend that. And I'd go yeah. to the big box store and find a new one. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the most random Greebly you've used over the years? Oh, wow. Um, random. Like rare? Like or... just like... Like I can't believe I used that for something. Uh, an ink cartridge from a printer. Oh, all right. Yeah. That's um, surprisingly unrecognizable yeah. if you start to take it apart a little bit. And that's the key is you, you mod, like if you're going to use this on a project, you modify it slightly uh, so that it doesn't have anything recognizable about it. Remove any resemblance of screws or Phillips head or flat head screws or anything like that and, and then try to modify it somehow. I, I just thought about this. I'm, when I made um, the, um, the pit boy from uh, uh, Fallout, Remember a couple of years ago, and uh, it, I made it out of cardboard mostly, and I, I used a, um, what is it, the little pouches, the uh, applesauce pouches. I used the top off of it uh-huh. as a knob, and and spray painted it, and it was it was awesome. But yeah, yeah. it made me think like of that, that whenever I was thinking of the. the yeah, it, that was it. That was it. Yeah. So those are all awesome kinds too. of random yeah. stuff laying around here. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like I, yeah, I, I'm. Oh, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the first time I, I, we babysat for my nephew, he's six now, but he was, when he was young, obviously we're sitting in the kitchen. They've got all those pouches with all the different types of yeah. sauces. And I'm staring at the, at the pouch and my brother-in-law is saying, well, you just feed him that. I'm like, yeah, but can I have the lid when you're done? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We had some old printers that uh, uh, one of our printers died and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to bust <laughs> into that. And then it disappeared. And I'm like, where'd that printer go? And my wife's like, oh, I threw it away. And I'm like, no. Oh, no. Oh. You know how many Gimli's were in yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> so many dwarves. <laughs> I um, I watched one video of yours um, a while back, probably, where you, um, I forget when it was. But it, it piqued my interest because I do a lot of stuff with, uh, resin and stuff, making carbon crystals wow. for those. Two. There you go. Uh, but it was one where you just took random trash and you filled it with resin and made a, a thing on it. So today I was eating something and I'm like, this. If I filled this with this was resin, this would be great. <laughs> it was. This is it. This is it. That brought props. See, look at it. like carrot there top tonight. Look at yeah. this thing. Yeah. This oh, was yeah. a um, Reese's cup. Snowman <laughs> Christmas <laughs> container. Nice. And I'm like, if you like that's like perfect. Just make yeah. a resin copy and that thing looks like yeah. it's like out of a spaceship. For those go. that are just listening, it's a trade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is our this is Geek's way of recycling and saving yeah. the planet. Yeah. We keep yeah. all the trash, we glue it on our walls, and we save the planet. Yeah. There you mm-hmm. go. <laughs> I, had a, I had an idea the other day that, and I, I can't find these so if y'all see them let me know but I've, um, I'm thinking about like the what do you call that the not patches but the the thing that like generals and admirals wear in the Star Wars right yeah you know? yeah the emblems yeah so I'm thinking about gum packets that have the blister packs <laughs> yeah. right you could just like fill those with paint you know and make it I can't find the gum anywhere like that anymore. It's all the little it's pieces, eclipse, you know. But eclipse gum, I think, is eclipse or chiclets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chiclets, would be right. yeah. chiclets would be great. But I don't. Know. I thought that was a cool thing. <laughs> yes, your wife in the comments just said, "Wow, a Reese's that big." Yes, a Reese's that big. <laughs> and I ate the and whole he thing. Ate it in one <laughs> yep. sitting. Her, her, her nickname is Reese, and so she's addicted to Reese. <laughs> I got another one too. I can send it here. <laughs> he's he's eaten ten of them already. He no. can't eat any more. Somebody brought them to our house. And says, Here's some Reese's, and I'm like, yes, please. Someone you didn't know, just no, no. <laughs> my wife's sister. <laughs> to knock on the door, take these, Yo, take these Reese's. <laughs> We've had that happen before. We'll open our door, and there'll be like a basket of candy or something. And I'm like, what the heck? Is it around Halloween or? It's like Christmas? then my wife's like, oh, in the neighborhood, they you, it's called um, it's called something where neighbors it's called just, creepy, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not yeah. eating that, yeah, yeah, around <laughs> like poison um, 
Halloween and they started around Christmas, like neighbors or whatever, like they'll do these like gift baskets. And the typically they put like a little note in there and you're supposed to put that in your window saying that you got like. Uh, uh, this is like some kind of weird European oh country. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Texas. It's the weird Texas. European country. Texas. <laughs> Texas. Good to other people. I didn't know. When the, is that with your first... wooden shoes? Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you leave your shoes on your doorstep and the next morning they're full of <laughs> they're candy. <laughs> it's it's just like the original Santa. I mean, if if your if your daughters don't have like the money to, for for marriage, he'll come by and leave coins in your shoe, <laughs> so you can have the money to sell your daughters off for marriage. <laughs> what? That, that's <laughs> the original Santa. This is a weird place, man. Texas yeah. <laughs> Look, your, Brian, your wife knows what it is. It says you've been booed. Uh-oh. Food. That's right. That's oh, what it is. Food. And but the food, Christmas food. one, there's not food. What? Yeah, this is I, not, I don't argue with her. At least, I said at least it's not food, like a brown yeah, bag. You've been food. <laughs> that's what it started out as. That's it? right. Let's that's change it a little bit. <laughs> Make it a hat. <laughs> it went from poo to chocolate. There you go. <laughs> All right. Let's back. I'm a, I'm a, this is us. This is I'm geek. Bring it back we Bring just back go here. on these little rabbit trails and talk yep. about. People even poo on your doorstep. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, they do it with booze too. What? Even oh, booze. That, well, that's, that sounds yeah, like that, I'm cold. Yeah. That's, that must be Las Vegas, not not in Texas. Uh, no, this is from your no wife. So. Neighborhood or oh, booze. maybe there's booze on my patio right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, our next door. door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our next door neighbor became an alcoholic last week because people kept leaving booze on his doorstep. <laughs> that works. Anyways, okay, I'm gonna focus back in. So, of all the projects that you've done, do you have like your favorite that you just like keep going back to? And you're like, I love that thing. Uh, I have a favorite that I don't own anymore, oh. and that's the tragedy of it. Yeah. So, making props has not always been something that I've done. We've always made things all the way back from being a kid. I I don't know how old I was when I learned to use a bandsaw, but I'm sure as an adult now, if I had a kid, I'd be nervous about how old I was using a bandsaw. Anyway, I digress. Uh, but, but years ago, um, I worked on, I found a vacuum cleaner handle and my dad and I just tore off into the shop one day and just spent the whole day building the probably the crudest lightsaber that was ever made, but it was made out of like a vacuum cleaner handle and, and windshield wiper rubber grips and, (laughs) and cut some PVC pipe. And I, I had it for years. And then we moved into our house and somewhere when we moved into our house, it it got lost. Mm. And it's one of those things that I think about all the time, wishing that I had it. Uh, Last year we built for May the 4th, we built a true, Grayflex, uh, 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 Luke Skywalker lightsaber with all the, the parts that you could find, as many original as we could find. Wow. And I always wanted to have that original perfect prop right next to the one I built with my dad. And it's yeah. it devastates me. So oh. when anybody, anybody asked me what the best project was, it was that. And it was more about the time we spent together than the physical object. Um, and I'm just, I've always been devastated that, that I don't have it. And it's, yeah. But anyway, that's, that's the one. Oh, the card mm-hmm. makes you all emotional. Sorry to go down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, yeah. It's just one of those things, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now for the next portion of the show, we go into our therapy session. <laughs> Lost props. Lost props. <laughs> Tell me about this lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> How does it make you feel? <laughs> All right, so we we <laughs> I'm just gonna keep pressing on. <laughs> we don't want to go down that road. Um, we all have these things, like people that make stuff. Um, we all have these abandoned projects. Yep. Can you tell us oh. about some of your projects that you? <laughs> You have abandoned. You said, I'm done. I'm sending you out to sea. I'm lighting the flame. I'm shooting the arrow and you're gone. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think I have one that I've completely abandoned, but I have one that I abandoned and started over. Does that work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So that would be the smuggler's room, uh-huh. which is what started this channel. Uh, I spent probably two years. I'll back up. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a kid, I wanted uh, my dad had built a playhouse uh-huh. in in our my grandmother's backyard, which is across the street. And uh, the idea was we were going to completely finish the inside of this clubhouse, playhouse, whatever you call it, and do all the things that they did in ILM and texture it all out. It was going to be this thing. And and just life gets away from you. You're working a full-time job. you got four kids and, oh, my gosh. So we never really got to that point. As a matter of fact, my sisters all took it over and filled it with Barbie cars and kitchen stuff and it was devastating (laughs) and it hurt my soul right my playhouse turned into like the girls club (sighs) so flash forward i'm a married man i've been married probably eight nine years and uh my my wife says well what do you want for your birthday and i say well i want to build a spaceship in the basement (laughs) that was the trial (laughs) of our marriage i mean like most women would have just packed a bag and gotten in the car and left and uh she asked questions as she should have. And I went ahead and explained that it's this lifelong thing and I've got to have a spaceship and asked me if I could just stay in the corner. That was how she phrased it. Stay in the corner. <laughs> I stayed in the corner for a week or so. And then she went on a business trip and then I expanded. And then she came home and I, she went on another business trip and I expanded again. <laughs> I pretty much own the basement at this point, except for the (laughs) bar. But I spent a couple of years doing reiterations of this spaceship, this space that I was going to, this nerd man cave, if you will. And uh, I got to a point where I just, I hadn't planned it. I didn't think it out. I didn't have the process. And I started to let it go. And I think it sat for months before I touched it again. And it was just this really strange room with trash hot glued to the wall and it it was a very (laughs) odd place to walk through believe me and uh and then one day i told her i'm I'm gonna do it right and i laid out a plan my wife's an interior designer and she's incredible with space and design and color and being able to to see a vision so i know if i'm gonna pitch something i better do a storyboard there (laughs) there better be samples laid out i've got to pitch this thing like it's the biggest sale of my life. And if I can't close it, I'm not going to get to do the project. So I did. And she bought it. And, uh, you know, (laughs) (laughs) we went ahead and just started down a new path. I tore all the old stuff out. And the one thing, one thing she said was you should record it. Like we should document this. Probably. So when she had me committed, there was physical proof. (laughs) I had done. Makes Uh sense. Yeah. She needs but, to be uh, able to take full control of the assets and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's insane. <laughs> I, I mix. So we started it again and started the YouTube channel, and the Smuggler's Room was kind of born out of that. Um, and so I didn't abandon it, but I abandoned version one, yeah. one point four, four or five, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Now we're on the, the final path. So how far <laughs> along into this new version are you? To where you want to want it to go? About ten <laughs> percent. <laughs> we've, we've taken the room and said, "Well, we're going to finish each section, but we're going to be as meticulous as possible." And and I know a lot of the folks that watch us on YouTube, they're they're always asking, "When is there another room build?" And it it takes me so long to really nail down how something's going to look that. I'm sure that we could have built 15 rooms in the time it's taking me to get through this. But each step that we've made, I've tried a new technique or used a new tool or tried to expand our knowledge of building in order to do it. And that's become more important than the room itself. And that's what we're trying to shift the channel to is we want to show all these different new things that we learn and how you can apply that into like a single project. And so that's become the mission. And we're going to finish the room eventually. <laughs> your your wife says 1%. Oh. oh. <laughs> to the heart. Oh. That just means she wants you to keep building and building and building it's, more. That's right. It's not much. 
So yeah, you can do more. I want you to take a, <laughs> a shovel and dig out holes, tunnels, yeah. and then make new rooms underground. Hits. So she's basically just Sarlacc giving pit. permission to expand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's what I'm saying. You just done so, so, so little, but you feel like it's a lot. You know? Yeah. Making sure you have enough YouTube content. Like it's just yeah. going to grow. Like, yeah. The living room, kitchen, <laughs> bedrooms, all of it. The whole house. It's done. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so besides the smuggler's room, which I know that's sort of your dream project, any other dream projects that you're like, one day I want to build or do this? Uh, there's there's a lot. Um <laughs> We, we talk about it. The the beautiful thing that most people don't know is how how involved Carissa, my wife, is in all of this. Um, we're slowly getting her on camera and more comfortable doing things. But she's incredibly talented. And so I think that the, the success is I get to do this with her. And we're always coming up with new things that we want to do. I know eventually we... Uh, we've we've got plans to take uh, we've got a Polaris Razor, you know the the UTVs, the side by side, and we want to completely trick that thing out so that you could take it to a a convention or a Comic Con of some kind, and it's it's a fully immersive experience with it, and we do that with a lot of different things, and it's not just Star Wars. We did the channel, and we didn't intend for it to only be Star Wars. We've gone down that path, and and we're pretty much in that path right now. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, we're we're huge geek fans of of all things like Lord of the Rings and um, Indiana Jones, <laughs> and then on the side, we've actually started something that's become a big passion for us, and that's we love horror movies. Oh. Just mm. love horror movies. And my brother in law and my sister, we all have a podcast called The Bloody Real R E E L. Shameless oh. plug. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> but, oh, no. but we do that together too. So. For us, I think it's just there's not one thing we want to do. It's it's all these things we want to do, and we just keep going after it. The bloody real. I'm going to write that down because I want to check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's it's a really good time. We if you if you like horror movies, it's it's a good time. Yeah, I love horror movies, and uh, I was for many years I was a scare actor for um, when I lived in Tampa for Bush Gardens. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I got to <laughs> hear a lot of people. I got the that's the first time <laughs> we've, we've we've talked about this on other episodes, but um, when I first went there, looking for sort of a seasonal job, they said, "Have you ever walked on yeah. stilts?" And I said, "No." And they're like, "Guess what? You're going to learn." So I got to learn to walk on stilts, <laughs> dressed up as this creature, and um, it was fun. It was like one of the funnest things I've ever done. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I've, I've got so many stories of <laughs> times in the uh, scare acting business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is funny because uh, for like 16 years, I was a, a, a student pastor too. So I would be okay a student pastor and then <laughs> going and scaring um, teenagers, you know. <laughs> Tell them about Jesus in the morning or and then easily right. scare them at scare night. them away from hell. <laughs> <laughs> scare the hell out of them. Yeah, there you go. Much. Scare the hell out of them. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. But no, yeah, that's I digress. Yeah. Um well, oh, I'm looking at this oh, sorry. The YouTube, I watch the YouTube in my corner of my eye and it's like behind. <laughs> so I like see something yeah. happen and I'm like, wait, that's not on my screen. What's going on? <laughs> What's Hatred, it's messed up. That's <laughs> <laughs> a lot to keep up with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned Lord of the Rings. What other, uh, what, what's your favorite thing besides Star Wars to geek out about? I got a bunch of Lord of the Rings uh, out there. I don't know if you can see oh, them. Oh, nice. There you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've, I've geeked out about a, a prop that I want to have that is the Holy Grail for me. Oh. And that would be a DeLorean. Oh. From back. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's true for so many of us. Oh. That, yeah, yeah. There you go. Right there. You got one right there. Yeah. Kate already has it. <laughs> yep. It's right here. I mean, you... yeah, I, I might crush that one if I try to sit <laughs> in it. But... <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, so it's it's all of that stuff, and and I grew up in the '80s as a, I was a kid in the '80s. Yes, yeah. I'm that old. 
And uh, it's um, <laughs> there's so much there, right? There's yeah. just so much there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. If you got a hold of the DeLorean, the things that you would do would be amazing. I mean, I think <laughs> there'd be so many Greeblies all over that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd have a Gimli in the back. You could time oh, travel. Gimli in the back. There mm-hmm. you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's probably one big uh, no I'm saying Gimli thanks a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh, that thing's probably one big grip, uh, <laughs> Greebly anyways <laughs> original mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah there was a lot to it I mean yeah just the fact that they used a uh, the Mr. Food whatever yeah. the processor food processor <laughs> yeah, thing you know fusion yeah fusion there yeah. Yeah, there we go. yeah yeah Mr. Fusion yeah Gosh, now we can talk about all kinds of 80s stuff. That's my besides Star Wars, my favorite movie probably of all time is Ghostbusters. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of great props in there too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I found the other day I was getting I was actually painting a droid out in my garage, one of my kids' droids. And I moved a box and I realized, oh, it was a box of some old old toys. And the kids I have a six year old and a three year old. They're like, okay. let's look at them. So we started pulling them all out. And what did I pull out? But the ghost trap from from Ghostbusters, I'm like, oh, I still have, we still have this. They're like, what is this? And I'm like, kids, sit down. Let me tell you <laughs> a better time. Dad's got a story for yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> there's, now there's, have, what is it? Spirit Halloween? I think it's Spirit. Yeah. They yep. they last couple of years they've had some really yeah. good looking Ghostbuster props that they yeah. sold. Um, we we're big fans of uh, build. Bill and Brittany Duran on punish props. And he took the Ghostbuster props from Spirit Halloween and really did an awesome job of showing people how you could upgrade those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was it's awesome. Like it had eight. electronics on it and uh, I mean it was real yeah. detailed. And I a friend right. of mine had one at work and he had a, another one of our coworkers build um three D print something. There was some modifications that people did to, to hang the the um I don't know what you call that thing, like the blaster or whatever on it. And, uh, cause it wouldn't hang otherwise, you know, real well, the, the, right. the correct way. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it looks really good. Yeah. yeah. Both of our parents are, are very talented with building things, doing stuff like they like do flooring in their house. They do all that stuff but for right. like Halloween and stuff. Like you would build stuff with your dad. Whenever we wanted a Halloween costume, our mom would make the Halloween costume. Mm-hmm. So well, for like, Ghostbusters, she she made me a Ghostbusters jumpsuit with like the name tag yeah. and everything, she, like uh, a Darkwing Duck outfit, oh, which man. was amazing, like the best Halloween costume I've ever had. She, like t- <laughs> two yeah. br- two brims of a hat and put them together to make a bill. Oh my god! <laughs> and like took, took like a witch's hat and pulled it down and made like the big hat. It was uh, t- amazing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite this yeah, was my the, best Halloween costumes were. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go no, ahead. He, the, she made a Nightcrawler costume for. Her. Yeah, she made me into oh. Nightcrawler one time. So he I got. Himself I had hair everything. then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I had hair, it was oh. yeah. It was yeah. Did it blue? So nice. um, it's a rite of passage, man. It's a rite of passage. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> I don't miss it really. Uh, yeah, I kind of wish it was mine was gone. Some way. <laughs> You can make it happen. You just uh, yep. shave, yes. it shave it off. Yeah. But yeah. She took gloves. She sewed like the fingers together. So it had like the three fingers. It's not crawler. Made the tail. Yeah. So cool. yeah. It's, it's yeah. nice. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What, uh, we're at what time? I want to keep the time. Oh, we're doing good on time. We're doing, good. doing great on time. Doing great oh. on time. So um, what kind of, um, so your channel is a lot about how to do the things you do, but like, do you have any tips for like first time right. people trying to get into the, to the hobby? You know, what kind of, what kind of things do you like to tell people? Yeah, uh, we do. And we, we do try really hard to, to, to do as much as possible so that we're not just, I'm addicted to my laser cutter now. And I, I always think about it, like, how can we do something else without this? <laughs> um, but one of the things that's that's great, especially if you've never made anything, is cardboard. I mean, we're especially now, right? We're in the the, the world of COVID, so we're having everything shipped to our homes. Mm-hmm. Take those Amazon boxes and cut them up. Get some tape and some scissors and go to work. I mean, you can do so much with cardboard. It's amazing. I was wondering about that. Yes. Yeah. 
Cardboard. Yeah. yeah. Cardboard. cardboard. <laughs> I found a, uh, what is the, 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 the website? The um, DIY uh, maker on Instructables. Instructables. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We literally just made one of those a couple yeah. weeks ago, or right before Christmas. And I found that Instructables for the uh, Holocron, and it was all cardboard. Yeah. And and the other thing that I don't do enough of, but I really love the medium is uh, foam, EVA foam, whether it's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, HD foam or you get it from TNT cosplay or if you just get it at Joanne Fabric, right? <laughs> that, that HD foam is so inexpensive and really all you need is a knife and some contact cement or super glue and you're ready to go. And there's so many makers on YouTube that do uh, foam work. If you go to Punish Props or SKA, SKS Props or Kumi Cosplay, those are three of the big ones that come to mind. There are incredible costumes, props, and everything else that they make out of foam. And that's, I mean, between foam and cardboard, you're set. You don't yeah. need anything yeah. else. Yeah, I'm astounded yeah. by the cosplay stuff that I see that's made out of EVA foam. I, I attempted, like, it's... Like it's <laughs> You started. You I started. started. It's not done. It I haven't finished you will it. will finish it. I will finish it. Because uh, <laughs> we, we go to Comic Palooza and we were going to go last year. And we were going to do like a, a, like a group cosplay type thing with the Mandalorian cross, crossed with Three Men and a Baby. Uh, three Men and a Baby. Oh, come on. <laughs> genius. So, um, Baseball's. Doubles. I mean, that's right yeah. up there with. Uh, so yeah, Kate Katrin got um, I can never remember his name. Quill. Okay. Quill. Quill. Ryan got the Mandalorian, of course, and I was going to be IG Eleven. Um, and then we had the child that we. Were and playing. then and we're going to have the child. So I, <laughs> I have it. I could go get it if you really wanted <laughs> to see it. It's not finished, but it's, it's, the it's thing giant. <laughs> <laughs> Will it fit in that room? Or? Yeah, well, I don't even know if it'll fit in this room. I can go get it. You should go get it. We'll go get it. Yeah, I want to uh, see it. I yeah, even the, the foam, like just the foam, like exercise mats that you can get, like at yeah. five below. Yeah. Just. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. For five bucks, like a, a stack of them. Like I did, like my. Harbor little, Freight has the floor mats. Yeah, oh, I'm sure look at that. This is my version of this thing. Um. Oh, he's going to go get his. See, he said it was so cool. Hey, so here's mine. I I um I'm a big I love Savi's workshop, so I made one theme yes. to Savi's, and then but everyone that's made them the insides I haven't quite liked. So I took EVA foam and I made it. Oh, there you go. So they all sit in sideways. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's some of that's my. Good. You can't really see them, but there's some that I've made. Uh, there you yeah. go. That's when I carved out a lava rock. And then made a resin mold out of it. So, but yeah, EVFM, you can use it for anything because you can bend yeah. it, you can mold it. Yeah. Heat gun thing. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so I made this like, you know, like, like I need to fit my head in here, but I'm like, I'm like, I want to get the proportions right though. <laughs> um, and really, you look at that head that you can't fit a head in there. It's, it's too it's small. So it, it kind of grew. A little bit. Um, <laughs> this is the funniest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's foam. Yeah, yeah, that's it's it's foam. Like it's it's got like it needs to be sanded again. I because sure. I stopped, but I, I was like smoothing it out <laughs> with some stuff and everything. Yeah, so I, I can. Glorious. Oh, it fits on your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to take. Fun. I'll have to take this off. Yeah. For it. Yeah, take yeah. yours off, and we can talk. We can make so, that for those sense. listening. It's a very large IG eleven head, right? Very large, yeah. like a bobblehead. Very, <laughs> and it, like, uh, what is that? Futurama. Come kind of on. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys definitely want to check this one out on YouTube, <laughs> right? <laughs> that was going to be great. Still, in order to make the scale proper, you're going to have yeah. the stilts to walk yeah. around on. So this looks <laughs> yeah. like the bobblehead oh version of it. Gosh. The huge head. <laughs> Little body. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, like COVID just sort of took the three man. Hey, the see, yeah, I can't stand up straight in here with it. <laughs> That's okay. You can. Uh, so yeah, it's still pull it off next time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and like you said, like I found like um like 
these travel like things that you put liquid in. They're like these cylinders I was going to use for like the eyes that poke out and stuff like that. Gonna use. Yeah. Yeah. yeah gonna use. You're still gonna use. Gonna use. I'm Pretty gonna good, use them, but I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Right now, it's just all. It's this is the EVA foam. This is just like um, yoga mats, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just found cheap yoga mats. I, <laughs> I wish I had thought to do that with my um my pit boy that I made though, because I I did yeah. uh, a bunch of cardboard, made layers of it, and put a phone inside of it so I could have the screen, yeah. all the stuff. But I could have done it easily with that foam. I just didn't oh. think of it. But yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's not still. hard to work with. I've yeah. never done anything like this before, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's really fun. It's just, yeah, um, I need to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> I got it's, a room full of that stuff right now. Because yeah. yeah. me, <laughs> me and my wife, you mentioned you've got a, a laser cutter. Me and my wife, yeah. um, not too long ago, got a Glowforge. Like the laser oh, cutter. there you go. Yeah, that's what we have. So, so yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. We've been we've been doing a bunch of stuff with it. We've we started like a little company, Forged Flare. Um, and oh, oh, yeah, I, are you sponsoring this episode? Yeah, you can't uh, that. I am. Yeah. I am so, sponsored, sponsored by Forged Flare. Um, I I get all the I get all the proceeds. Um, <laughs> you don't want to know. Yeah, you don't want to. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're doing like like ornaments and yep. like all kinds of stuff i want to start doing some kind of like in, inspired by stuff like star wars things like i made some yep. coasters which are kind of fun with some yep. star wars designs on them yeah like, so yeah yeah so yeah I, I was gonna ask you which laser cutter you got um but yeah, yeah like, it's an forward. incredible machine oh it's we, amazing we, yeah we use it for just just about everything i i'm i i have a uh I purchased a CNC, an Inventables uh, X Carb CNC, a few years back, and it's it's a great machine for for what a CNC does. And I find that I go straight to the laser cutter immediately because it's so much faster. And mm-hmm. and we've just incorporated it into all of our workflow, mm-hmm. so much easier. And I, and I know it's it's a luxury tool, a hundred percent. And every time we use it on the show, I'm going. And this, I'm I'm doing it again, you know. I'm, I'm using it again, um, but I can't get away from. It. <laughs> oh, it's, right. it's it's hard. It's hard not to use it for. for what yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we had a question in the, the comments here. Hmm. Let's see if I find. Oh, it. Brian, there. this is from the Geeky Maker. Hey, uh, it says Brian, how was it to do a, doing a collaboration with Bob from I Like to Make Stuff? Oh man. Bob is, are you guys familiar with I Like to Make Stuff? I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, so Bob builds all different types of stuff. And we've been fans of his since years ago, when he first started, really. And I, uh, there was just something about the nature of him. And I think that that's true for a lot of people that we watch on on YouTube, is you can look at him and you can say that, well, that's a real person that, that was maybe just like me or just like you that decided, well, I enjoy doing X and I'm going to film it and I'm going to put some effort into it. And hopefully someone else will get sparked by the idea of doing it. Right. And Bob is like that. He likes to make stuff. And, uh, we watched him for a long time. And then when we started our channel, somehow or another, he mentioned us, uh, on a podcast that he does with, Jimmy Duresta, and uh, it was the drunken woodworker. Um, make, uh, oh my gosh, I'm going to butcher. Oh my, make something. Oh my gosh, I know him as the drunken woodworker. I now feel horrible. Uh, <laughs> David Pichuto is his name, but I'm trying to think of his YouTube channel. David Pichuto is his name. Anyway, it, I go back a long way with that. Long story short, uh, he mentions us on his podcast, and several people came over and started watching what we did, and that was just. It was just such a neat thing that someone that we didn't know watched a small little channel like ours and then shared that. And we went to Star Wars Celebration in Chicago a couple years ago, and I'm standing at the, the, the hotel front counter. I don't even remember why I was down there. And I hear my name, and it's Bob, Bob Claggett. And I turn, and I, I turn into that like fanboy moment where you're just like, oh! Freaking out, right? And 
I'm trying to compose myself, and I I know there was a conversation. Can't tell you what it was. Got back to the room with my wife, and I was like, she said, well, what did you say? I have no idea what I said. I said what do you mean you don't know? I said, I, I don't know. I went into fanboy mode, and I couldn't think. So we flash forward to this last year, and Bob reached out because he had a project he was working on. He's a big Star Wars fan, and he's he wanted to build this really cool cabinet. And I was like, I'm game. Let's whatever you want, let's do it. However I can help. And the collaboration part of it was just really enjoyable because you you got somebody else's vision and then they wanted your input. And then you were able to to come up with some ideas to contribute to a project. And what it's got me thinking and what I've been thinking since is with with COVID and everything that's happened to the whole world, not just the U S we're all living in this kind of strange place right now. And that sense of community and people coming together and doing things together, whether it's, you know, giving your time to someone that needs it or making something together that inspires somebody else. That's what it's all about. And I think that's what I got out of that collaboration. It wasn't about the project as much as it was, the realization that there's a chance to work with other people to get everyone in the community excited about doing something. And we've had messages and emails and things like that have come from a lot of people out there that they, and it's crazy. They've seen, you know, they're saying things like they were down and out or they, they felt really depressed or whatever it was. And then they caught an episode and then they got inspired to go out and clean up their garage and build something with their kids or build something with their wife or her husband. And that made all the difference in the world to us. And people keep asking, well, why do you, you know, it's so much work that you're doing for every week. And I mean, we work a full-time job, but it's worth it because every time one of those messages come in where we kind of change somebody and change their outlook on life or whatever it is, it's worth it. So the experience with Bob, that solidified that for me. That's cool. Yeah. Sorry. I got long uh, <laughs> that's great that's cool stuff mm -hmm. that's the way i was to um past couple of days waiting for you to come on the podcast <laughs> mm -hmm. he's not going to remember any of this yeah. it's, it's good that it's recorded <laughs> I, I can listen to it like what did i say to him <laughs> did i ask him to marry me i don't remember <laughs> Several times. <laughs> uh, yeah, things are getting weird. Did I say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm adopted. I'm going to be adopted by him now. I'm pretty sure that's that's in the works. You got the same hairstyle. We're working on it, man. I can't grow a, a full beard. I'm not man enough. But maybe you can help me with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is all greeblies. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know. You don't want to know. Air off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Found items that I glued to my face. All from the dryer lint. <laughs> oh man! So, because um, we love Star Wars, have you have you been to Galaxy's Edge? I have. I've been there. I've been there twice. I was lucky enough to go twice. Actually, my wife and I got to go together literally a week before the world kind of went on lockdown. Oh. Mm. Uh, it was right at the first of March, last week of April, but it's an amazing place for a star yeah. Wars fan. It just truly is. Did you Which go, one did you go to? Yeah. Florida or California? Uh, California. 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 Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's, I love it. I've been there. How many times have I been? I keep finding ways to go. Yeah. <laughs> are you, are you close to, one or the other? We're, we're well, I'm Europe. in Texas, so I've been to Florida. I haven't been to <laughs> oh, California. Oh, Texas, okay. Because okay. We, we lived in Florida for like 14 years and then moved to Texas. So I'll, we have some family that that used to work for Disney. They they got released during COVID, but they still live there. Yeah. So it was always a free place to stay, and I'd find a cheap plane ticket and be like, hey, I'm going to go to this thing. Where's it at? <laughs> oh, it's in Orlando. <laughs> well, it's, it's like me. Have I've you, got... all, you all been? Yes, Charles. I have not been. Chris has not been, but Catron and I, I haven't been, been to, to a park in quite a while. Me and my wife love to go on like the Disney cruises um, yeah. quite, a, quite a bit, so I need to go back to a park. You need to go to Galaxy's Edge. It's an amazing place. To. Yeah. It, yeah. Especially before COVID. Now it's sort of different. It's still good, but they've taken oh, away yeah. a lot of stuff. Well, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. Put up, 
plexiglass. Yeah. But, but well, a lot of the but, actors walking around is there's not so many of them. I yeah, guess. yeah, they don't interact yeah. less. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did you did you get to do Savi's workshop? Uh, the workshop was the only thing we didn't do. Oh. That's the lightsaber build, and we didn't we didn't do that. I was I was having a hard time justifying the cost of building a saber to do it. <laughs> um, but we we did everything else. That's the one aspect that we we need to do the next time we go back. Yeah, yeah. And for someone like you, because I think you're a lot like me, you would be you would love it because it the whole experience is basically junkers finding parts and there you go. telling their story, and you're you're surrounded by all their junk, and you yeah. you make your own lightsaber out of all the junk they found through the galaxy, and it, it's it's amazing. Right. Experience. I've got yeah. to do it three times. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you didn't pay for what one of you paid for one of them, I think, right? Um, you had yes, gift I cards for one of them. Somebody gave you one. Of them. Someone, <laughs> one of our listeners, he, he somehow gifted us one. He somehow lucks into all these things. Yes, like he wins things and go and people just give him things. I think he like tells sob stories. I don't no, know it's just the face. <laughs> like the poor man can't I, grow hair. They feel sorry yeah. for the face. He can't grow hair. Here's a, here's a light. Here's a $200 life. People give me, <laughs> I've got so many lightsabers that people just give me and I'm like, I, I, what did I you do like to deserve this? this? I love it. <laughs> I don't know what you did either. I don't either. I, I enjoyed building the droid. I think people give it a hard rap, but I've, I, oh, I love my son and I yeah. built 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 a droid, my, mostly my son, right? Yeah. But, but it was just I thought it was a really cool like if you kind of let yourself get into it, just like with the saber. Yeah. Race, but it's like yeah, this this cool conveyor belt. Let's get that part, you know, and like going through and then putting it all together and and uh, picking all that stuff out. I, that was a really fun experience, and I want to do that again. I, I I'm not as much into the sabers. I, I could do without it because yeah. I'm I just don't get into that. But the I think it's really cool to yeah, do the, the droids. So we we are we're big droid people, and when yeah. we went to Galaxy's Edge on the last time, my wife built hers, and yeah. at the time I was like, "Well, I've I've got one, you know, like a, a yeah. lefty back there," mm-hmm. and she built it, and then she said, "You know, when we get home, I'm going to mod this thing," <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh my, "Why didn't I build my own?" And then sure enough, the last right before Christmas, she did a full mod on hers. That. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and now I'm like I want to go back. Can we can we do it like four times? I want four. Of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just because I didn't see the uh, I didn't see the potential like she did, and that was fantastic. Yeah, see, I yeah. did the uh, lightsabers, and then I got my kids into the droids, and now I'm I'm modding their their droids, which is funny. There you go. First, my 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 son wanted one, and he's like six years. I think he was five years when he when he got it. And then this last trip, because we're Disney Vacation Club members, so we go. You know, okay. once a year, um, she wanted our, our three year old wanted to make one, and I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, yeah. Like I thought she'd be like princess stuff, was princess. <laughs> but she saw Ray and she went crazy. She was like screaming Ray's name. <laughs> and then she said she wanted to build a droid. I'm like, okay, let's build a droid. And um, <laughs> so after she built it, I was like, now you have to name your droid. Like my son, <laughs> when he named his, he was like R two R two, and I'm like, well, if that's what you want to name it. So I go, what? Yeah, what know. would you like to name your droid? And she goes, Pickles. Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a orange, which is going to be orange and purple droid named Pickles. Pickles. There you go. Yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I, sh- I showed my son the video of your wife doing that the uh, the droid, you know, and doing the airbrushing and things. I was like, see, we got to get one of these and make it look like metal, you know, because it's like it's plastic and you want it to look cool, you know. And he yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. let's do it. So that was that's exciting. A, that's a good her, question. Her weathering is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Um, for those that would like to get into airbrushing, what's a good, because I've, I just use spray paint and I would <laughs> like an airbrush, but I, when I start looking yeah. at them, I'm like, which one do I get? Like, which one works fine? Like how much money do you have to spend on something like that? that you know, the, I love Adam Savage's philosophy on tools. And what he always says is, Buy the best tool you can afford, right? It's not about buying the best one. You buy, if you if you want to buy an airbrush, buy the best one you can afford and use it and discover whether or not it is something you want to do. It's something you want to use. 
And then if you find, well, yeah, that works really well. I like the tool. I like what it does. Then you can move forward and buy a, a better version of it. Um, but, you know, like I'm a tool junkie and I'm always like, well, I got to buy that tool. And I always think, well, let me buy the cheap one and see because I may not like it tomorrow and then it just sits there. So that would be my that would be my suggestion. Try it out first. So a yeah. straw. And I was going to say, get a straw. <laughs> Okay. I, don't know if, I don't know if I like this, and I'm feeling a little lightheaded. <laughs> don't suck the pain. Just <laughs> I don't know why I'm sitting here holding a lightsaber. Just... I don't either. <laughs> Not sure. We weren't going to say anything. Yeah, it just kind of happens every it's episode. Like oh, every episode yeah. This is my dark saber, uh, yeah. Favis, that I made. Nice. I'll turn it on. <laughs> I just like to show it off. He just like to show it off. So. <laughs> He, uh, the uh, the folks at uh, at um, Galaxy's Edge uh, went crazy over his his items. Like his, uh, it's really loud, Brian. Brian. I'm turning it off. <laughs> <laughs> but he has all his. He had all his. Uh, his. Um, we go together to to Disney a lot. But um, so he had all of his um, kyber crystals and his lightsabers and and all the. W- there was one point where we were at, in in Galaxy's Edge and all these cast members just surrounded us and we're like you're the guy that has that you know and like and they were <laughs> geeking out over like a superstar yeah. and it was it was really cool it was, they were <laughs> they were geeking out and and uh just enjoying this seeing all that because the stuff in the stores is cool but uh yeah and some of it's really cool they, they uh but it they don't have cool stuff like what we can make as as makers you right know? sure they but, should yeah. hire you to yeah. make stuff Absolutely. <laughs> but it's funny though, we have your we have your picture up backstage and i'm like you have my picture up backstage <laughs> you're not i got that cleared in court where you don't yeah, have to worry right. about that anymore yeah not that boring <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was really cool so so just bring your stuff to galaxy's edge and people will go crazy over it. there you go there you go they'll go what store did you buy that at and you're like i made it and then they're like what <laughs> anyway. I've been making uh, stuff with Lego, and uh, so I made my little oh sweet. And uh, so I, I, I'm working on my next uh, next time we go to Galaxy's Edge, which will be next Christmas, not this coming, but the next. And um, and it's going to be cooler then, like cooler weather, right? So I'm like, I can right. really dress up and and be a yeah. bounty hunter of sorts, and like have this stuff hanging. Don't have, I'm yeah, gonna make yeah. a. I want to make a detonator and. No, they won't allow, allow you to have detonators in Disney. <laughs> don't be real. <laughs> but but I, I don't know. I just I, I thought this was really cool. It's one of my favorites that I've done, and uh, I I want to put yeah. a light in it, but it's just a red, you know. I would. Piece. I was just gonna ask but, if it lit up. I know. I I thought about doing it because it's got the space. Like I could just take some pieces out sure. and put a a little LED in it. But uh, right. um, I don't know. Might do it. But, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so you guys got any more, we're about to get to the hour mark. Do you guys got any more questions before I ask maybe one or two more to end tonight? Any questions? Any questions on, on the, the YouTube, uh, the YouTubes, what I call that? Tubes. The YouTubes. <laughs> the, tu- the tubers. The tubers. Um, I'll ask you, I'll ask you this question because this is just a Star Wars geeky question. Disney announced all this, like 10 shows and movies and stuff coming out. What are you looking forward to the most? Star Wars thing coming out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of it. Yes. You know, I, I get asked as, as I get asked a lot what what my favorite stuff is, or are you angry about Disney or did you hate that or, or that kind of stuff? And the, the truth is I'm excited about all of it because growing up with the films and having so little of it it was always such a bummer that we didn't have more of it. And I think a lot of it was that George Lucas had different visions of what he wanted to do, but he was really limited by the technology that was available. I mean, if you could imagine Lucas with something like the volume where they filmed the Mandalorian and having the ability to film what he wanted with that technology, we probably would have had a lot more. So for me, it's, it's, I'm excited about all of it in a different way. Um, I'm a little bit different of a Star Wars fan because for me, it's all about the texture. And I, and I say that meaning that 
the environment and the world that was created, the used universe is what I'm the biggest fan of the characters, the stories, all of that is great. But when I watch one of those films and I look at the people that created the look of it, that's what gets me the most jazzed about it. That's what I get excited for. So when Disney rolls out and says, well, we've got, you know, 10 different projects we're coming out with, I'm going, man, I hope I'm alive long enough to see all of this. Because <laughs> you know? that's a lot of years of stuff that they're going to yeah. do. And, yeah. you know, Dave Filoni and John Favreau, they come in and they do The Mandalorian. It's this huge success compared to what's happened with the new trilogy when someone asks why it's because those two guys were just like us as kids and they loved it and they grew up with it so there's a different mentality they have and they they're careful with it and they deliver what we are expecting to see and i think that infection that they've done with the mandalorian has done that to a lot of disney and i'm hoping we get to see all of that come to life so yeah. I kind of avoided your question. No, that's but... fine. <laughs> <You're perfect. laughs> if you'd pick just one, I'd be like, "What? You don't love the rest of them?" That that would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So we'll end it with this: If you could work as a prop designer on any Star Wars or geeky sci-fi or whatever film project whatever what would be the one holy grail thing that you wish you could have worked on or want to work on or um ridley scott's 1979 alien oh that's a good one yeah yeah empire strikes back is my favorite movie of all time Mm -hmm. and alien is so close to that that it's scary and i'm a star wars fan through and through that movie was I don't know. There's Roger Christian is my hero. If there was anyone I could meet that's famous, <laughs> worked on any film, it would be that man. Mm-hmm. His his vision is what we see. It's that texture. And mm-hmm. Alien was was perfection when it comes to sci-fi as far as the look and mm-hmm. feel. Yeah. Yeah. And anyone else me like fav- my favorite horror movie, I, I tend to say Alien. Like and people are like, hey, that's like sci-fi. Like it's it's horror. It's a horror movie to me. Like it's scary. It's a horror movie yeah. in space. space. Nobody can hear you scream. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is you're gonna buy you know, maybe a summer home or something, and then that's gonna be the alien house. Yeah, we'll build the Nostromo out in the forest somewhere in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. <There you> <laughs> He'll show up on Google Earth a few years from now. <laughs> he lives there. That really weird guy from YouTube. You that. <laughs> His wife left him and, you know. <laughs> he has a cat and he lives on the ship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Oh, man. Well, thank you for coming. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, it's been fun. I hope you have <laughs> had fun. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. Thank you guys so much. This was a great time. Yeah. Great way to spend it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're up in Colorado? I'm in Colorado, yes. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Stay warm, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad today. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for coming on, and you are welcome back anytime. Um, thank you. This pop- we used to record on Thursday, so just call us up. <laughs> just call- I'll just, just show up. up. Randomly. <laughs> The old Skype. Was it David Letterman that there was always that weird guy that just kind of sat off and made comments? <laughs> yeah. I'll, just, yeah. I'll just be part of it. Hey, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> There's only room really for one guy. weirdo here. <laughs> me. Oh, thanks, guys. I appreciate yeah. it. And before appreciate you leave, where, I mean, of course, the YouTube channel, but where can people find you if they want to yep. uh, get a hold of you or whatever? Uh, yeah, you, most of the stuff you can find is on our website, so thesmugglersroom.com, and we've got links to social media from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and then obviously the YouTube channel. Come and check it out. Cool. Well, this has been episode 176 of I Am Geek, and we'll be talking with you next week. I am geek, 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 geek